all right, going to go through some scriptures that make a real problem for the Calvinistic uh, denial of free will. Because the scriptures teach personal accountability for your own actions. But if you don't have free will, then you can just blame God for your actions. That's when you really get down to it, when you are true to Calvinistic theology. If you're going to be consistent, if everything that happens is the will of God, you have no free will, then that means when you do a sin, when you commit uh, error or sin, that means you can just say, oh, you know, God will me to do it, because I have no free will. These scriptures on personal accountability prove free will and prove that you're accountable for your own actions. You can't blame God for your actions. If we're going to be consistent with Calvinistic theology, you can blame God for whatever sin you do. So first, let's go through the scriptures, okay, which is always a standard, okay? I don't care what some creed or catechism says. What does the Bible say? Galatians chapter 6, verse 4 to 5. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Plain, plain, plain as day on that matter. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. Romans 14, verse 12, says, So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. We see this thing, you're bearing your own burdens, you're giving an account of yourself. You're accountable for your own actions. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 10. For we, for, we, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. You're giving account for your own actions. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. It says... But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Giving an account. They're not saying, well, God, you made me say this stuff. No, they're giving an account for their what they speak. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. The fact of being rewarded according to your works too also further shows free will because, you know, again, why would Jesus Christ re uh, reward you according to your works if he just wills you to do it? You know, if you, if you weren't doing it by your own free will. It doesn't make any sense. See, Calvinism is just a, a complete error and it's a mess, a complete mess of a doctrine. Uh, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 12. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart, his, the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? Not saying, well, God, you made me do it. No, you're, rendered, you're being rendered according to your works. Because your choices are your responsibility. You're, held, you're, you're responsible for your, what you do, I'll put it that way. Uh, Psalms 62, verse 12. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest every man according to his work. Again, we see that there. You're being rendered according to your work. Colossians chapter 3, verse 24 to 25. Here's a really good one. Colossians 3, verse 24 down to verse 25. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Uh, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, for there is no and there is no respect of persons. You're, being, you're receiving for the wrong that you have done. But in Calvinistic theology, they believe that, that basically God is the author of sin. So why would you be, Why are you being punished for something that you had no ability to do otherwise? doesn't make any sense. See, this right here makes a big problem for Calvinism. Colossians 3, verse 24 to 25, fly out destroys Calvinism. Because if you're doing wrong, you're receiving the reward for what you've done. You can't blame anybody else but yourself. Also, Isaiah chapter 3, verses 10 to 11. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. And there's many others too. These are just a couple I just off, you know, to list off. But there's many scriptures that talk about personal accountability. Here's the last one I'm going to list off. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. The reward of his hands. His own choices, his, he's, he's being held accountable for his own choices and his own actions. That's what the wicked is. And also the righteous are being held, you know, are being rewarded according to what they do. See, the fact of rewards proves also proves the thing of personal accountability and free will. Because you get rewarded according to what you choose to do. 
So if God is, is willing you to do certain things, why would he be rewarding you for something that he that you had no ability to do otherwise? He's rewarding you because basically you could have chose to do wickedly, but you said you chose to live righteously. You said you chose to do good you chose to basically do good works instead of doing wicked works, and he's rewarding you because of that. Proves free will and refutes Calvinism. So Calvinism Again, it attacks the scriptural doctrine of personal accountability. And these verses on personal accountability flat out refute and destroy the false doctrine of Calvinism. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.